Hey everyone, I'm going to do an oil change on my 2020 Palisade. All of these panels on here are on here for aerodynamics and this one in the passenger side, that panel right there that goes all the way back, that one will have to be removed for access to the um, drain and the oil filter. As on almost all new modern cars, most little bolts that you see anywhere on a car, they're going to be 10 millimeter. Um, the industry has really tried to standardize that, so any small bolts you see, um, first tool, first socket you should ever grab is a 10 millimeter and try that. There are six screws and there are two of these push rivets. You get, there's a flat spot in here and you just get your screwdriver in there and pop the head of the rivet out and there it falls right out. There is the panel off and there are different length screws, different size screws. The aluminum ones went here and in the very back was another aluminum one. And there's what those little push rivets look like when you put them back in, you simply insert them and pop the head back in place. With the cover off, there is the drain bolt all the way to the back. It is a 17 millimeter and it does shoot out pretty much straight out the back. So I am going to try to block that off um, with some kind of cardboard or something because that's a rather large bolt. And I know there's 6.87 quarts of oil in here. So when I take that off, I am expecting that to shoot like a rocket straight out the back. There is the oil filter canister. This is the first time I've had one. Everything else I've ever owned has always had just a standard oil filter. And there is a bit of a spout looking on the bottom of it that I'm thinking once I open that slightly, it will let that be a drain hole for me. Um, I don't have a socket that large that fits it correctly because I know it's metric, but my inch and um, 1 16th socket does fit it enough. That's what I'm going to try to use. As I said, I expect this to shoot out like a jet when I open that, uh, take out that drain plug. So I'm going to try to divert it with a piece of cardboard, but I'm going to make sure that never happens in the future. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. My little splatter shield worked very well. Um, that worked, in fact, extremely well. But again, I'm gonna tell you in a little bit how to install something so you never have to deal with that in any of your cars again. Here is the oil filter for the 2020 Hyundai Palisade. There is the part number and they call it a service kit. It does include the oil filter, the O-ring that goes around the uh, canister and a crush valve for the drain plug. Old crush washer off, new crush washer that comes installed in the kit is on. I'll put the drain bolt back in. I don't have a torque spec on it first, but again, everyone remember you don't crank on these things. It's good and snug, but don't crank on it. So here is your oil filter assembly. When you take this out, for me, the filter stayed in the part that's still attached to the engine. Um, unscrew this all the way. As I did unscrew it, that weep hole is a drain hole. It drained out nice and slow from there. Um, let it drain till you get slow and then just pull it out the rest of the way. Um, there is a rubber O-ring on there that you do want to replace. One does come in the kit. And if you have a pick, something like this, just get in there, scoop underneath it, pull it right off the bottom end and you're good. Um, here is the new filter. There is no up or down. There is a spot inside here that it will press into. So that's what I will do when I put this down. I'll take the filter and I will push it up inside here. I'll have replaced the O-ring and I will put that all back together. They did a real nice thing here on the cap. They tell you right here that you're gonna to wanna to torque this thing to 35 Newton meters. 35 Newton meters is above my inch pound torque wrench but in my foot pound torque wrench I started actually 33.9 plus 1.4 that will give me my 35 newton meters of torque you do want to be careful with this this is plastic 
everything is plastic. The housing is going into is plastic. You do not want to over torque, over wrench on this thing. If you have a torque wrench, great. Um, it's going to be a very light back in place, snug setting. Um, the O-ring is what's going to seal it. All you need to do is get the O-ring up far enough, far enough. It's not like the drain bolt where the whole surface of that washer seals it. That's not the case here. This is an O-ring. So as long as that O-ring gets up inside, you are sealed. Make sure you do note before you take that rubber O-ring off where it goes. It does not go in that groove that has the holes for oil flow. It goes in that groove above it. I suspect you can put it in that bottom one and it would be loose and it would not seal. So make sure you do put it in the right groove. Like always, take a photograph of anything before you take it apart. You got your camera in your pocket with your phone. Um, take a photograph, put it in there. I will put some oil around that O-ring before I install it to make it easier to get it in. And new oil filter pressed in place. As you go to install the plastic housing with the filter already installed back onto the engine block, you will get some resistance as you're screwing that on. As you saw in the brand new white filter, this hole was smaller. This is some sort of fiber material. This is what actually seals it up in the engine and also to the cap. So you're going to get some resistance until the new filter that material actually gets pressed up into that area and seals up. Again, don't over torque it, it's plastic. Um, you're basically going snug and you're going to where the two surfaces that you can see the two, the original filter housing and the cap where they match up. And again, just as a reference, I don't know if you can see it, but 35 Newton meters is roughly the equivalent of just over 20 foot pounds. So we're not talking hardly any torque here at all. It's just enough to seal the cap so the cap stays in place. That oil filter cap is back on. Torque to my 35 Newton meters. Everything wiped dry. I'm ready to just install my aerodynamic splash panel and then we'll put some oil in it. When you're putting the screws in, always put all of your screws in first. Get them all started, but don't tighten any of them. That leaves the panel some wiggle room in case it needs to move around. Get all your screws in first, get them loose. Um, and on this, what you're going to want to do is you pull that head back out and you're going to pinch these fingers inward so that they go up inside the hole. And once you get them pinched in and this is back up inside the panel, then you push that thumbtack up. It'll be flush and that's what holds it in place. These aren't going to last but a couple times, so you can get them from your dealer. You can get them from a help section. I'll go buy a bunch of them from the dealer, then I know I always have them. That panel simply goes up and sets in place. It does not need to tuck under anything. It just sits in place, snug everything down. Again, simple 10 millimeter bolts, they just snug. There's no torque involved at all. And as you saw earlier, I always lay my screws out on the ground exactly how they come out of the holes and I just always put them exactly back. That's just how I do things. You saw the one long aluminum colored bolt in the front goes in the recessed area. The other aluminum colored bolt goes to the very, very back. When it comes to engine oil, that's a whole different subject. There's a lot of discussions and debate on that. My philosophy has always been, go with the weight you're supposed to use. There it is right there on the oil fill cap, 5W30. Stick with a name brand oil. This is the oil I am going to use in this engine. This is a GDI engine, gas direct injection. Um, there's different conversations out there. There's a lot of conversations out there about these engines and keeping the intake valves clean because they don't get cleaned like all your other older generation electronic ignition cars do. Valvoline is calling this their modern engine oil. It is supposed to be designed to L help reduce these carbon buildups. I don't know if that's marketing hype or not. Um, I typically go with Mobile One and Pennzoil, but I'm going to go with the Valvoline on this. I know Valvoline has been around forever. It's a trusted name brand. It does have all the API indications on it that your owner's manual tells you you need to look for. Um, if I'm wasting a few dollars on this every oil change, so be it, but I'm going to go with this oil at least for the time being. 
This takes 6.87 quarts according to the manual. I'm not going to put 6.87 quarts in it because I don't know if that's what it takes at an oil change or if that's the maximum capacity in there is still engine oil in there. It's cheaper to buy this in the five gallon jug. So I will put a full five gallon jug in. Then I always buy one quart. I will put my separate quart in. That gives me six. I'll put a funnel in this. I'll pour another whole quart in this. It has the marking so I know where a quart is. And then I'm gonna use this to top off the engine. I'm gonna put another half quart in. I'm gonna put in 6.5 or 6.6 .6 quarts of oil. I'll run it, shut it off, check my dipstick, and I'll keep an eye on it for the next few runnings, and I'll see if how much exactly it takes, and I'll try to make a note. But for now, that's how I do it, and I am going to start off with 6.5 or 6.6 .6 quarts. The only other thing I'll mention while I'm here as far as maintenance with these GDI engines in, I have been using BG44K for ages. Now they're up to their Platinum Edition. It's the same as the old. It's just refined, something newer. I put that in the gas tank every 7,500 miles in all my vehicles. If it helps keep things clean and it helps with carbon buildups on all my cars, including my old carbureted cars, terrific. If it's not doing anything and I'm wasting money, so be it. I have never had an oil related issue on any of my cars failure i've never had a gasoline related failure on any of my cars so i'm just going to stick with what i've done it seems to be working for me the last thing i want to mention is i told you how i'm going to make sure draining the oil on this vehicle is never messy again i always install an item called a fumoto oil drain valve f-u-m-o-t-o I didn't buy it before I did this oil change because they have different styles and I wanted to find out which one was going to fit on this vehicle. Now I know, I'm pretty sure it's just the basic Fumoto oil valve. Um, and I'm gonna get the one that shoots straight out the back. What you do is when you, next time you change the oil, you leave the drain plug off. You put this oil, Fumo, this Fumoto oil valve in its place. And it has a lever on it that you turn the oil drain on or off. I always buy the one that has the nipple and from what I'm going to do from here on out and I, like I said I do this on all my vehicles when I get to do my oil change I'm going to pull that service panel off I'm going to insert that in my oil drain valve I'm going to put that in a gallon jug I tend to use the windshield washer jugs because they're a lot more rugged than a gallon milk jug and they usually have a bit of a seal to them open the valve I used clear tube, I think that's 3 8 I cut it to fit what works the vehicle. Open the valve, let it drain, fill this up, close the valve, take this out, put this in another jug, and keep going until it's drained. Shut the valve, pull this out of the jug, pull that off the drain valve, clean off the outside of the nipple. I'm just type the guy I am, I stick a piece of paper towel inside the nipple to clean the oil out of there. And if you buy that, make sure you buy the little caps, the rubber caps that go on the end. Put the rubber cap on the end of it, and that is it. You're done. It's that quick. There's no wrenches. There is absolutely no mess when you're draining your system because this goes on the car. This goes in there. Bingo. There's a valve. It's on. It's off. It's that dry. Yes, depending on how your oil filter is on your car. Um... Yes, you're going to make some mess with your oil filter. That's why you still need some kind of a standard drain pan. But I've had so many times on different cars where I get seven quarts of oil shooting out the back that my drain pan can't keep up and it splashes all over the place and makes a mess everywhere. I absolutely love the Fomoto oil drain valve and I'll call tomorrow and find out what valve is right for this vehicle and I will post that in the description. The additional beauty of using that Fumoto oil drain valve is um, I don't have to drain my oil out of my collection can and all that when I take it to the auto parts store to recycle the oil. I just put the cap on this, take both jugs in, dump it in the container, bring these home and they're ready for the next time. And I'm sure there's knockoffs out there, so if you're gonna get one of these Fumoto valves, make sure you're getting an authorized Fumoto brand oil drain valve. I've just been thrilled with them. They've been out there for decades. They're solid. Once you buy it, you never ever have to replace it. It will last a life of your car. 
All right, the oil is in. I have a wide mouth funnel. I found these a long time ago. I think they're available everywhere. They just fit perfectly inside the oil fill neck of all of my vehicles. Um, I always make a mess no matter what I do and how hard I try not to. So it's paper towels everywhere for me. And again, on this Valvoline jug, they actually give you a bit of a pouring lip, which really worked out very, very well. Um, and again, I put that five full quarts in. I put that extra one single quart in, in the single quart bottle that I had. I filled that one quart bottle back up to the full line where it was. And then I put half of a quart in the car. So I know I have exactly six and a half quarts in. I'll take it off the ramps, warm it up, back it up and down the driveway, and I'll check on the oil level there. And I'll tell you in the end result how many quarts I needed for an actual oil change. When you pull your dipstick out, wipe it clean with a paper towel. And near the very bottom, it may be hard to see, but there's two dots. One is full, one is low. Of course, this one is low, this one is full. When I pull this out with my six and a half quarts in the car, I am right on the F. So do not put in 6.87 quarts. That is a total capacity. That is not oil change capacity. I put in six and a half probably next time I'm going to put six and a quarter in and check it. I like it to be in the middle here closer to the high but i don't necessarily like it being on the upper end of the full side and again i've warmed it up let it sit for a while um, after we drive it tomorrow and park it again tomorrow night i will check it again but do not put that 6.87 quarts in start out at six and a quarter quarts and then check it from there the reason you don't want to overfill an engine is that will cause excessive oil splashing from the crankcase and the crankshaft you never ever want to overfill engine oil, especially in these modern engines. You want to be in between those two marks. You do not ever want to overfill it. If you found you've overfilled it, drain some out. And again, that Fumoto valve would help you do that very easily. Um, but again, start out with six and a quarter quarts and then check your oil level from there. And I will monitor mine again more closely tomorrow. There is a service interval that will pop up here in a minute saying service required. I will attach a link in the description that takes you to a Hyundai video that shows you how to reset that and also how to set whatever interval you want. Um, very good website that will tell you how to do that. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, if it's helped you, please click the like button and also subscribe. Um, that would be a great help. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps you.